sorry about that. Um, so, hi, I'm uh, Sam Marshall, and later we're going to have uh, Jason and Tim talking to us. This is developer presentation, so it's a lot less uh, slick than the... <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be talking a bit about the um, course page and the overall interface. So overall, this is all about how we implement a new design, and um, you'll also get to see some of the real system as it is at the moment. Um, and later on, you're going to hear from Jason talking about some activity pages and the interface there, and uh, Tim's going to talk about the automatic conversion tool we have. So, um, as it says there, there might be some bugs in these, even though we did pre-record the videos. So, um, start off looking at the study planner. You can see this looks quite a lot like the concept designs. So, there's a, at the top of the screen, there's a title and a nice picture. In the main area of the screen, lower down, you've got uh, all the study weeks. This is basically the same as the Moodle weekly view, um, but some of the enhancements we've got is it may be grouped. This is all done using a custom uh, course format that we've uh, created. So in this case, we've got weeks two to six in a group there. Student can choose to view all current weeks, which is the default, so we just show the current week and the three weeks around it. Or they can switch to view all weeks, and then they'll see every week in the entire course. Uh, they can expand and collapse the individual weeks. So the, the current week is expanded, but the other ones they can expand and collapse. So that they're not um, bombarded with a whole lot at once. The completion tick box is against each activity. So these are in core, but when it ticks it, we're showing the progress at the top as well in that progress bar. And we've also added counts that you can see within each week. So it tells you you've completed zero out of two and whatever. You can mouse over the um, progress bar which is actually done with an SVG image. That's a developer thing. Um, you can mouse over the progress bar to see which thing it was that you didn't complete yet. So um, next thing I want to talk about is the uh, top area of the page. So we've got uh, the important pages that students want a lot are in the top navigation. And we don't use the Moodle navigation block, so we've got two different ways of replacing the navigation. This is one of them, and Jason's going to show you what happens within a week later. So in the top stripe of the page, this blue stripe, we've got all the important things like assessment that they really want, and other things like this resources page, which is for general resources that are used throughout the course. Um, the resource page is done using Moodle sections, so the same as uh, a Moodle uh, week, for example, similar to that. Uh, and there's also some code specific to each page. In this case, we've got on the right-hand side, you've got the downloads and library resources. That sort of thing is a custom bit of code for that page. And there's similar for the assessment page. It shows people's marks and things like that. So another thing I want to mention is uh, sub-pages. So this is another technical um, module which allows you to have a list of activities on a separate page. We already had that in our previous system, didn't work quite the same way. This one it's done as part of the course format because that means that all the Moodle standard code for doing, dealing with lists of activities still works. So I'm going to go to a sub-page in a demo course, which I stuck in the welcome area because it didn't have one on the real course I was messing with. So if I go into a sub-page, you can see the sub-page is going to be just a list of stuff, Moodle activities, same as uh, you would have on a course page. Um, there's a slightly clever part. So this is a custom module, and it displays some Moodle sections. We had to change several plugins to implement this. So if I go into that glossary that's in the subpage, you'll notice it appears in the breadcrumbs. You've got the subpage added. And in order to do that, we had to change the, uh, a renderer in a the theme as well, because actually modules aren't allowed to contain other things. So quick demo of some of the user interface for staff editing these. This is the standard Moodle user interface, but we've added some bits. So here's the standard Moodle part. I'm going to just turn editing on. And uh, you see we've got um, the uh, icons for dragging and dropping things around the page, uh, editing the name, and you've got menus where you can do things. Uh, we did hide the uh, indent feature because it made think we didn't want people using it, basically. <laughs> um, now showing a dynamic editing to insert sections. So those little plus bars, you can click. If you want another section somewhere between two places, you can just click the relevant plus, and it'll add a section immediately. Um, the next one is combining weeks. I showed you we've got three to seven there. I'm now combining uh, weeks one and two. So there you go, we've got weeks one to two. Uh, if you decide you didn't want to do that, you can split them apart again. So this will now be weeks um, one and two separately. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to show, I believe, is 
Deleting section. So I'm going to delete section two, and you'll see that the one that was three to seven is now going to change to two to six. Stealthed items. These are items that students can access, but they don't get a link. This is useful basically if you link them somewhere else. So on these sites, we put them in a separate area that you can get to from a link near the bottom, and you can just add things into that area. So you might have a link to them from another resource, and you don't want them in the main sort of pages. Deleting items. So this is, works the same as in standard Moodle. You just choose delete. But there's no confirm. It happens immediately. And you get this prompt at the top of the screen that tells you it's been deleted. And you can choose to undo that should you want to. And it will come straight back again. So this is a bit like they were, Martin was talking about. There's a core feature that, called a recycle bin. Uh, and so this kind of does the same thing. Uh, you can also, if you've deleted it and you don't immediately want to undelete it, but you decide you do later, there's a link to a deleted items page, and that will show you when it was deleted, who deleted it, uh, and you can, and where it was, and you can undelete it, and we'll keep those for a, an arbitrary amount of time, currently it's four weeks. And the, that was the audio test I deleted, it's now back. Bulk actions, this is another thing that we've added to the editing interface. So on all of these pages, that's the sub page, the course page, etc. Um, you can now do bulk actions. So I'm going onto the sub page with editing on and you've got a select multiple items button. You can now choose to select everything on the page or um, just some of the things or everything in one section. So I've done select all there. I could have selected within a section or the individual things. When you've done that, you can either move or delete them. So I'm going to move them. When you click Move, you get a quite interface might be familiar to people who've used Moodle for a while. You get these little target boxes, but you can now move to other pages and go to somewhere else within the course, for example, the main course page, stick them in a week. So if you just click one of those, it moves from there. So there you go. There's those two example items that now appeared within that first week on the course page. So finally, I just wanted to mention, this is another technical detail, um, we've implemented this using lots and lots of Moodle sections. So there's now different types of Moodle sections. You've got sections in a week, you've got sections used for sub-pages, and the sections used for those special pages like assessment and so on. So those are all sections, and they're kind of arranged into a sensible order. And this is a little bit different from the way most Moodle course formats work. So that was a pretty quick tour of the course stuff, and I'm going to hand over to Jason to talk about activity pages. OK, thanks. Uh, obviously, it's going to talk a little bit about the, uh, some of the uh, layout and navigation techniques that we've, we've used. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's more pictures that we're going through at speed, um, so apologies for that. But the good news is it means I don't have to talk so much. The, the pictures will show the story. So the first thing I wanted to, to talk about was, was navigation. Um, so we're kind of used to seeing uh, the Moodle front page of the course where you've got a list of activities, but we want to think about uh, what about when you're in the activity? Uh, how does the student navigate around? Um, we did mention that we're, we're not showing the navigation block to students, which uh, seems to fit in with uh, where core are going um, after Martin saying that they're not having blocks in 3.1, so it sounds like we're on the same page. Uh, so I'll show you the way we dealt with that, which is uh, to use uh, tabs at the top of the, the screen, which I'll show a demo of in a sec. Uh, they're fully responsive. Uh, and we achieve this uh, technical detail through uh, <coughs> renderer overrides uh, for the header in our theme and some JavaScript and CSS. So here's the tabs here. Uh, you can see that at the top of the screen there, and that's basically one tab is, is each activity uh, that's in that section. And I've got a little video here showing the responsiveness as well. So it's going to go down, and we've got uh, two breakpoints uh, from that full desktop down to a tablet view. It should pop up now. And then we've also got uh, the mobile view as well, which will come up in a second. Uh, uh, and then we've gone to mobile view. And we're still at the tabs at the top there. We were just showing one instead of four. And then the, the student can scroll around. Uh, within each activities, we have a number of layouts. So for uh, teachers and uh, managers, admin roles, etc., they've got uh, the full blocks and everything. Uh, showing on the right, uh, students don't get that, so they get more screen real estate there. Uh, there's some activities where everyone needs to see uh, the two-column layout. So an example is quiz, so that's a, a quiz there with the questions on the left. Uh, and the way we've dealt with that on mobile is that we've moved it into one column on mobile. 
So the first column you see is the content, and then you can swipe or move across to see the second column. And here's an example of some layouts with blocks. So on the right, there's some blocks uh, there which are sort of in-page blocks. They're not sort of general blocks like navigational settings. They're specific to those pages. Those on mobile will show on the top. And there's another example there where the blocks are collapsed as default on mobile. Uh, and you can see the main content straight underneath. So that's a quick whistle stop tour. And Tim's going to talk about some other aspects. Right, so we've got these amazing new websites. Um, well, actually, we haven't. What we've currently got, of course, is about 400 websites that are presented each year that are all using the old design. And we're planning to roll this out um, starting the first courses will go live in September this year, and the last ones to be converted will be October next year. So during that year, we've got to convert about 400 websites which is a little bit of a scary thought, particularly for our colleagues in LTS who have to manage that process. But the good news is the, there's quite a lot of similarity in some of the key parts of the structure of the old websites, like the study planner, the way the, the material is set out week by week. So it turns out we can actually convert a lot of it automatically. And so we built a tool to do that. Here's an old style website. You can see there, there's a link to a tool to do the conversion. Now, Doing a conversion is an irreversible process, so we're a little bit scared about that. So actually, we make you make a copy before you can convert it, and uh, that just uses Moodle backup and restore, but it's completely automated. You click one button, and um, it does the thing. You just have to wait a bit. Being backup and restore, it's a bit slow. But eventually, it completes, and you have a copy, and then um, we're just dithering between, do we, do we make a copy and then convert the copy, or do we make a copy and convert the original? We'll make our minds up eventually. But you get, you get a scary warning. You click the button, and you get another progress bar, and this one's quite quick. And then you have a new style website with as much as possible automatically transformed. Um, we built the first version of this tool. I'm sure as people start applying it to their sites, they'll realize there are more things we can automate. So we'll do that in a, in a bit. Um, of course, it's not a perfect website. For instance, we haven't got a pretty image at the top. You know, need to go and choose a pretty image. More seriously, you might want to look through the study planner and how the activities appear, because probably once you see your course in the new design, you can do some things to improve the pedagogy. Um, one of the things the conversion tool does, actually, is it makes a detailed log of every single thing it does, which turns out to be very useful. If, if, if you know this thing used to be in the website, but you can't find it, well, the conversion log will probably tell you what it did. This, for this, I converted a real site. The conversion log was 769 steps. It's a bit remarkable, um, though 200 of those, it, it, as Sam was saying, it's lots and lots of sections and we output a sort of map of what all the sections are. So we automate it as much as possible. There's still going to be a lot of manual work to do and with 400 websites, that's really quite scary. So now just a quick summary of the whole talk. Just really to make the point, we have implemented this without making any changes to Moodle core. The key bits, we've got new theme, obviously, new course format and new activities for the sub-pages. Then there's some other plugins like some extra new blocks or um, new um, conditional availability plugin and, of course, the conversion tool. I am lying slightly when I say we haven't made any changes to Moodle Core. Some of the usability improvements we thought of affected our existing activities like Forum NG or OU Wiki. And in those cases, often they were good ideas, so we've just made those changes in the tool so they will affect the old theme as well as the new theme. And all of you who use our plugins will get those benefits. Similarly, in like the quiz module, which is in Moodle Core, we had some good ideas, and those have gone into Moodle Core. If you upgrade to Moodle 3.1, you'll get those little usability improvements. So hopefully everyone likes what we've done there. Um, we started the initial sort of pilot work on the new, the new course format. Sam, Sam started that last summer. We've been working away very busily. We're in the kind of um, get everything finished phase at the moment. I'm a bit surprised they let us out to come to this conference and talk to you. We should probably be back at the OU coding away. And as I say, next year's dedicated to the rollout. And so far, I did this just for fun. We've written quite a lot of code. In just the theme, you know, we've got um, 7,000 lines of CSS and so on. Across all the code we've written for this project, it's about 25,000 lines of PHP. Oh my god, we're going to have to maintain that. Lots of CSS. We've done an awful lot of automated testings for this. 
um, sort of, um, and that's it. Um, so as Sharon and Tammy said, it's, a, it's an iterative process. This is just kind of version one. Once this is released to our students, I'm sure they'll have many good ideas for what we should do in future to make it even better. Thank you.